pause in fighting. The release of hostages by Hamas. Their release is part of a deal that's been in negotiations for weeks. Emerging from the darkness of captivity. Carefully loaded into those Red Cross vehicles. Now undergoing the delicate process of reuniting with their families. On November 22nd, Israel and Hamas agreed to a temporary ceasefire. This was more than six weeks after Hamas militants killed over a thousand Israelis and took roughly 240 hostages. And after Israel's relentless bombing and ground invasion of Gaza killed over 14,000. That's why the word Mizrahi was formed, meaning Eastern, making up around 60% of the population. Yup. Mizrahi Jews are Arab. They're Arab Jews. They came from Arab nations in Aliyah's, uh, either due to pogroms or on their own volition to Israel, okay? They come from all around. They come from Yemen. Well, I guess Yemen has a separate designation, but they're non-white. But still, like, uh, Yemen Jews, uh, Jews from Yemen, Morocco, uh, Syria, Iraq, even some from Iran. They're Middle Easterners. They're Middle Eastern Jews. They are fucking Arabs. They're Arab Jews. But because Israel is a Jewish ethnostate, a Jewish supremacist ethnostate, they have a different designation, a different classification. That's why so many people, well, not Iran, yeah, not Iran. Iranian Jews are in Los Angeles. <laughs> Morocco, Middle East, wow. Mena, man, Mena, suck my cock. Mena, 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 Middle East, North Africa. Like, suck my fucking cock. What do you mean? You you ever see a motherfucker from Morocco? What would you say? Middle East is perfectly valid to say when you're talking about Morocco. Dumb bitch. Okay, here, I specified it. Menna. Is that better? Menna. Dude never met. Dude never met a fucking Moroccan person. Why is Morocco considered white in the U.S.? Uh, Arabs are considered white in the U.S. too. That's it. Yeah, many Arabs are Schrodinger's white. They're white until you learn their name or see their ID. Muslims in general, too. Across the board, myself included. From afar, I'm a white guy. The way I, the way I dance, the way I act, the way I sound, and then you fucking hear my name, and you're like, okay, never mind. I was so wrong. I was very wrong about this guy. Not Pakistanis, yeah, because they're Asian. That's a different designation. Pakistanis are Asian. That's like a, that's like a non-white subgroup, whereas uh, Arabs are considered white. In the American uh, census. No, he's probably Moroccan of a Berber ethnicity like most of the population. That's why I don't like the Arab designation. Okay, whatever. And Palestinians. Under the deal, Hamas would eventually release 105 hostages, mainly women, children, and foreign nationals. In turn, Israel would release 240 Palestinian prisoners, mainly women, children, and young adults, the vast majority of whom Israel had detained without formally charging. A bus full of women detained by Israel until- There's nothing funnier, oh my God, there's nothing funnier than fucking every group of individual from every country in the Mena region being like, I'm not Arab, I'm not Arab. Okay. I'm not Arab, bro. We're different. We're Berber. We're Amazigh. We're fucking, uh, we're Phoenician. Okay. I get it. My bad, dude. Same goes for you too. I don't give a shit. I, 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 when, when someone says you're Arab, I don't give a shit. You want to know why? You want to know why? Despite the fact that I'm Turkic, okay, and therefore Turkish, like, or Persians not being Arab, it doesn't fucking matter. It literally doesn't matter. In the eyes of the American population, we're all the same, okay? It's MENA. It's MENA region. That's it.
these designations only matter when you're having a conversation within the in-group. When you're having a conversation with the out-group, they don't give a shit. You're the same. Anyway, we should not normalize Arabization. Sure. Till now, tearful family reunifications between a mother and a teenage son. The moment a mother finally sees her. Does Stavros smell bad? No, he smells great. Dorsa for the first time after eight years in an Israeli prison. This exchange was a new chapter in a long history. Over decades, Israel has released tens of thousands of prisoners in exchange for hostages. The first captive Israeli soldier to be returned home in a generation. Key to that deal, the simultaneous release of the first 500 of more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. There are more than 7,000 Palestinians in Israeli prisons. Around 8% of those prisoners are serving life sentences for serious crimes. Yeah, the irony is Persian, Turkish, and Central Asian Jews are also usually under the Mizrahi umbrella. Yes, there are literally fucking... I had, a, I had a Turkish Jewish friend whose last name is straight up Mizrahi. That's when I first found out about this designation and where it comes from anyway. Yeah. So in Israel, it don't matter if you're fucking... If you're from any of these areas... No, most Turkish Jews are Sephardi, not Mizrahi. Doesn't matter. There are still Mizrahi Jews in Turkey as well. The Turkish Jews that are Sephardi came from uh, Spain in the original. The oh, fuck? What just happened? My steam just like refreshed on its own. They originally came from Spain, but the rest of the. You see, okay, here's the distinction. A lot of the Jews that came from Spain that went into fucking Istanbul are technically still considered um, Sephardi. However, however, okay, the ones that came from Europe that went to North Africa, which was still, the parts of North Africa, which was still under the Ottoman Empire, they're Mizrahi. including killing Israeli civilians and soldiers. But what about the rest of them? How did all of these Palestinians end up in Israeli prisons? To get some answers, we called Hadi Viterbo, a professor of law who's researched the Israeli prison system, and Basil Faraj, a professor who specializes in cultural studies and research on political prisoners. Palestinians are mostly convicted in military courts and Israelis are convicted in non-military courts these are two of the main judicial systems in Israel. Yo, okay, all this, uh, I've been disrespecting Vox a lot, but they've been pumping some fucking decent pro-Palestinian content. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on over there, which is kind of sad, I guess. It's just like, because the bar is in hell. Like, they're just straight up reporting the truth, and I'm like, wow, that's cool. I'm glad that... At least there's some. At least there's some fucking uh, outlets and uh, that are an extension of legacy publishers that are reporting on it in a truthful way. A civilian court system and a military court system. Military courts are presided by uh, Israeli military judges. There are Israeli military prosecutors, and they operate under Israeli military law which is very, very different to the Israeli non-military uh, legal system. The scope of each of these different court system is determined not even by the territory and not by the nature of the charge, but rather by who is being prosecuted. This court system mostly stems from military orders that go back to the beginning of the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories in 1967. Israeli military and civilians have feared violent resistance from Palestinians. So these military orders list rules for public order and security. And we're talking about thousands of military orders that have been published since Israel's occupation. One of those early military orders was military order number 101, which basically prohibited any political expression. It includes bans on gatherings of 10 or more persons for a matter that may be construed as political without military approval. It also bans the display of flags or political symbols, except with a permit. And people who violate the order could be liable for imprisonment for 10 years, or a large it's fine, or both. Another crucial- 
I love when these are some of the fucking rules, and then people are like, they're all terrorists. That is why they are in prison. Prison. Because they are doing terror. The order is number 1651. It's a 108 page document which consolidated a sweeping list of offenses, including a 10 year sentence for anyone who attempts to influence public opinion in the region in a manner which may harm public peace, or potential life imprisonment for any act deemed a disturbance to the security of the area or that. Yeah, we're gonna, after this, we're gonna watch the fucking Jubilee video and I'm gonna try not to fucking die. Middle ground round table Israel Palestine by Jubilee. IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. Get ready for quite it, vague and that Get allows ready. for ad hoc discretion by the Israeli officials to decide what constitutes a disturbance of uh, the public order. Here's an example of how the orders are used. In 2016, a lawyer was detained during a peaceful demonstration in the West Bank city of Hebron that called for reopening a main downtown street that the army prohibits Palestinians from accessing. One of his charges was for demonstrating without a permit and another for attempting to influence public opinion in the area in a manner that may harm public order or safety. In other recent cases, Israel charged Palestinian journalists with incitement, saying news videos they had taken, which were often of confrontations between Palestinians and Israeli forces, political processions, or funerals, constituted incitement. Once arrested, they often end up as what Israel calls security prisoners. It allows for a lot of discretion, but it's overwhelmingly applied to Palestinians. The vast majority of these security prisoners placed in the military system are from the West Bank, and they are largely transferred out of their territory to one of 19 prisons within Israel. And the fact that Israel transfers Palestinians into facilities inside Israel is widely considered uh, a violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention, which is a cornerstone of uh, international humanitarian law. A smaller number of security prisoners are also Palestinians from Gaza, though they are often sent through a different system. Another small number of security prisoners are Palestinian citizens of Israel, though for non-political crimes, Palestinian citizens of Israel are largely sent to the civilian court system. On the other hand, no matter the crime, almost all Israelis are placed in the civilian court system. So, Israeli settlers and Palestinians in the West Bank, even if they are accused of committing the very same crime in the same territory, would go to different courts. Israelis to civilian court, and Palestinians to military court, where, from the moment they are arrested, through their detention, they are governed by a starkly different set of laws. I think it's important to emphasize that the due process is not at all present in Israeli military courts. First, about a quarter of prisoners are in what's known as administrative detention. Administrative detention is essentially when a person is being taken to custody, incarcerated, without any charge or trial. That is presented by Israel as a preventive measure. In April of 2023, Israel was holding over 1,000 administrative detainees without charge. That number is up to 2,000 since October 7th. They are held on secret materials, meaning Israel says they have evidence. But Palestinian prisoners have no way of accessing the materials or knowing what they've been accused of. And every six months, the courts can rule to extend their detention indefinitely. Israel says it only uses administrative detention when evidence of acts that endanger security cannot be presented for reasons of confidentiality and protection of intelligence resources. It has been used systematically uh, to criminalize Palestinian action, to criminalize Palestinian organizations, to criminalize Palestinian um, uh, human rights work as well, and also to, to instill the sense of fear that anyone who dares to speak at I don't understand what these guys are saying. Israel's the only democracy in the Middle East. Like, what the fuck? It's so weird. Such a weird thing to say. Odd. Against the occupation could be punished without having due process. Then there are the three quarters of prisoners accused or charged with a crime. Some are serving life sentences for serious crimes, including murder. And protecting Israelis from violence is a large part of Israel's rationale for having this military court system in the first place. But the vast majority of prisoners, over 90%, are charged with other security offenses. Apart from the charges, the way these two... Yeah, they're charged with missing the top of the hour ad break. Or rather, not being subscribed to the top of the hour and getting hit with a three-minute ad break. 
Which, if, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with the Twitch Prime. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Um, also, like I said, right after this, we are finally going to fucking move on to not-so-green pastures, but we're going to be moving into... The Jubilee video. The court systems operate is also vastly different. In the military court system, public defenders are not regularly provided. And confessions in military court are often written in Hebrew by an officer, requiring many Palestinian detainees to sign statements or confessions they don't understand, which can then be used against them. Once a Palestinian prisoner actually goes to trial, conviction rates are a staggering 99.76%. So essentially what that means is that once a Palestinian is brought before an Israeli military court, they're as good as destined for imprisonment. In Israeli civilian courts, there's a different standard even when it comes to what it takes to be arrested, let alone convicted. When you look at crimes against Palestinians, according to data collected by one Israeli human rights organization, of more than 1,500 cases of ideologically motivated settler crimes, investigations were closed without indictments in 93% of cases. In another of their studies, of cases that did indict Israeli suspects for violence against Palestinians, only a third of cases resulted in full or partial convictions. They are protected by the law. We have witnessed images of settlers burning Palestinian villages down to the ground and killing people. They were not persecuted or, or, or sent to any form of real punishment. And there's major discrepancies in sentencing too. For example, if convicted of manslaughter, a Palestinian... Like they're using Adamir, which... Um, the fact that they're using Adamir is pretty good because... Adamir itself is is considered a terror cell by Israel. Like they they consider it to be a terror uh, organization. Palestinian faces life imprisonment, while Which an Israeli not. convicted of the same offense would serve a maximum twenty years imprisonment. In Israeli military court, bro, get off your phone. This guy says, yeah. Except I'm on my phone because I was posting. Bitch, let me tell you something, okay? I'm I'm a multifaceted, multi pronged, multilingual content creator do you understand you understand me bitch like you go oh you're on your phone yeah why am i on my phone that's right because i'm promoting the next segment on twitter i'm probably not gonna make it out through this one the last one almost took me out israel palestine you think i'm on the phone doing nothing okay and sometimes let's be real i am calling your mom the banger okay sometimes i'm texting her to reminisce about the good times we had okay about me banging her and then other times I'm posting shit like this. And texting your mom. Just saying. Courts, Palestinians can also be tried as adults at just 16 years old. In civilian courts, it's 18 years old. Since 2000, at least 13,000 Palestinian children have been arrested. These are minors between the ages of 12 and 18. By the time the war began, there were over 150 of them in the military court system, either placed in detention or in Israeli prisons. One quite common charge against them is stone throwing. There's a long history of uh, Palestinian resistance through stone throwing. For children, for example, Palestinian children, that is the most common uh, charge. And that's an offense that is punishable by 20 years in prison. Conditions within prisons are another issue. Palestinian prisoners are subjected to overcrowding, abuse, torture, repeated denial of family visits, denial of medical care, and solitary confinement. And even if a prisoner dies in custody, Israel often- Bro, I've talked about this so much. And you guys still go, oh my God, 20 years? Yes, terror, terror rock. It's not the regular rock, it's terror baby. Throwing a rock of terror. At the tank. Do you know? Do you know what a rock does to a Merkava tank? You do not know. It does nothing. But it makes the operator feel very bad for killing the terror baby. Often practices a policy of keeping the remains of scores of Palestinians in freezers. Oh my god, they're graves. posting this too!
remains of scores of Palestinians. This is huge that they're opposing the Israel often practices a policy of keeping the remains of scores of Palestinians in freezers and numbered graves. With the end of the ceasefire, Israel's ground invasion of Gaza has resumed. And even though some prisoners were released in exchange for some of the hostages, the population of Palestinians in Israeli prisons has only increased. Officials estimate the number of Palestinians in Israeli prisons has doubled since October 7th. You're talking about a place that's occupied through military force, through decades of oppression of violence. In this broader context of occupation, I think the prisoners issue actually became very central for Palestinians. So I like the Vox taking the like the funniest liberal position of being pro-Palestine but also pro-landlord. Whereas like most American progressives are like anti-landlord, like anti-housing market being fucking devastating. They hate that. But they're also you know, they you would rather most progressives in America, not younger demographics, but most progressives in America would be like yeah, I, I think that the housing market should be fixed, but also I'm pro-Israel. Vox took the exact opposite position where they're taking the unpopular position on both ends, where they're like, yes, we're pro-Palestine and also we're pro-landlord. <laughs> All the different issues faced by imprisoned Palestinians have been heavily criticized by human rights organizations who call on Israel to address those. The limitation of this framing of the problem is that the focus here is on reforming the system rather than asking whether the system is fundamentally flawed. Sent this video to my mother and father saying, it's wild to know that dad was deployed to Kuwait for less than this. Wish me luck. I mean, probably going to be 